Hey, what's up, Cyphers? Welcome to another week of Dive Deep, where we're gonna take another look at something from the weekend teaching. And if you were with us this weekend, you know that we talked about the, the story of David and Bathsheba. And, and it's more of a popular, one of the more well-known stories of David's life. And we looked at really what, what could he have done to avoid that trap, but then what could he also do to get out of it? And what I wanna talk a little bit more about right now is, is what exactly is temptation and, and what is God's plan for overcoming it? And, and I wanna start just by, by clarifying something that you've probably heard before is uh, God is tempting me. And, and I can assure you that if that's the thought that you have, that's not true. God, God doesn't tempt you. In fact, the origins of temptation goes all the way back to Genesis 3, one of the first stories in the Bible to fall. And, and what happened then is, is there was something called original sin that was developed. And you and I, all of us, we have a sin nature inside of us, this gravitational pull towards selfishness and self-centered living. And it's the reason that as a baby, like you don't have to, you don't have to train a child to be selfish and to cry and to do all those things. Like it, it, it's original sin. It's the sin nature. And, and James actually kind of talks about then how, how temptation is something internal. It's not something God is doing to you. In James 1 uh, verses 14 and 15, it says that temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires, they give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it eventually gives birth to death. And so God's wish is not just for you to reject temptation or, or to win a hard fought battle. But like we, like we talked about, it, it's not just to grit your teeth and to get through it. It's actually something, something much more sustainable. God's ultimate longing for you and for me is a transformed heart that results in a desire to hate sin. And so think about it like this. If you're someone and, and, and you struggle with going out on Friday night and partying and you come to the realization, okay, I'm gonna accept Jesus as my personal savior. And through that process, I'm, I'm realizing that this is not God's best plan for my life. The ultimate goal is not for you to sit home every Friday night with your head down between your legs and just think, man, I sure wish I was out partying. I sure wish I was out at the bar or out wherever. I, I, like th that's not the ultimate goal. Although that's a great step in the right direction be because you're not doing the same things you used, to be, you used to be doing. The ultimate goal isn't just modified behavior, it's a changed heart. And, and I think sometimes we can focus so much on the actions that we wanna stop doing that we can almost miss the heart of the gospel, which is that there's a God who loves you so much and wants to have a personal intimate relationship with you where you strive to honor him with your whole life. In fact, one of the things that David wrote in Psalm 32, it's Psalm 32, nine. And David says, do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding and must be controlled by bit and brittle. And I can think of my life, there's been situations, and I'm sure you can do the same, where I haven't necessarily wanted to do right, I've had to try to be controlled. But David's saying, we don't wanna be like the horse, we don't want to be forced. It's not just about the outside behavior. The ultimate goal is for a changed heart. And there was a popular song that we used to sing in church several years ago when I was growing up. And some of you may remember this. And one of the specific lines was, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. And I think at the end of the day, the way that God wants us to understand temptation and understand sin, that's the core of it right there. That we want to fall in love with Jesus to do the right things to strive to love him more than we ever have before. And I think at the end of the day, one of the greatest pieces of good, the good news that we got to explore this week is that even though we do fall, God's grace and God's love is so much bigger than anything that we might wrestle with. Proverbs 20, 28, 13 says, people who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. And again, you will fall, but like we talked about this weekend, it's about taking ownership of those actions, extending forgiveness, and then starting the path to reconciliation. And man, I, I just wanna wrap up this whole weekend teaching, just all the content we've covered this weekend with a prayer of thanksgiving and just rejoicing for the fact that no matter how long we've strayed, no matter how far we are from God, his love covers every area that it could. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for the fact that, that we can live for you, that you can empower us to, 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 to have an honest desire where we're chasing after you and pursuing you. 
And Lord, I I just pray specifically for the person right now who feels like whatever they've done has cast them so far out of your grasp. Lord, I reject that lie in your name. I pray that you would cleanse them, that your love would shower over them, and that you would allow them to know that they are chosen, they've been redeemed, and that you have a beautiful plan for the future of their life. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Amen.